Despite being only about 20 miles apart, Northwestern and the University of Chicago might seem like entirely different worlds. But what does a day at UChicago versus Northwestern really look like? Join the Daily Northwestern as we invite the Chicago Maroon over to Evanston and then take a field trip to UChicago. Hi everyone, I'm Ava Mandoli. I'm a sophomore at Northwestern University majoring in journalism and global history and minoring in data science. I'm also one of the Spring Quarter Digital Managing Editors along with Erica Schmidt. Hi everybody, I'm Michael McClure. I am the managing editor of the Chicago Maroon here at University of Chicago today to show you around campus with the Daily Northwestern for our joint issue. I'm a third year at the University of Chicago studying political science and music with a minor in statistics. And I'm really excited to take you around this campus, which I've called home for the past three years. We hope you like it and come on along on our journey. The first stop in many students' daily routines is, of course, coffee. At Northwestern, Brew Coffee Lab is a popular and convenient spot for caffeine. Located in Main Library, Brew Coffee Lab offers everything from cold brew to boba to cinnamon buns. Like a lot of you Chicago coffee shops, Brew Coffee Lab is largely staffed by students, and that means you'll often see a familiar, friendly face behind the counter. Today we happen to run into Olatunji Osho Williams, who is one of last quarter's digital managing editors at The Daily. As someone who doesn't drink coffee, I appreciated having lots of drink options at Brew Coffee Lab. And the mango boba drink that Tunji made was delicious. Now on to getting a little bit of homework done before class. We're headed up to a study spot in the North Tower of Main Library called CORE. CORE is a hub for working with friends, although I've found it's often more geared towards socializing rather than studying. But it has great views of Lake Michigan and the Kellogg Global Hub. It also has some quiet spaces, with study rooms on the bottom floor. Core was much more serpentine than I expected, but there was a bit of everything there. Now, let's take a look at what a morning at UChicago might look like. One of the first things I noticed about UChicago was its robust on-campus coffee shop scene. UChicago has five student-run coffee shops and more than 10 other coffee shops around campus. Maybe it's because of all the coffee we drink but they are also places to play a round of pool or admire the vintage posters on the walls. Plus, being a barista is one of the most coveted campus jobs. Now we're headed to Regenstein Library, one of UChicago's six libraries. Beneath the gray, brutalist exterior lies the lovable heart of UChicago's social scene, the A-level. It's the place for all work and no work at the same time. The first floor of the library stays open until 4 a.m., so the fun continues all through the night. I thought Regenstein looked strikingly similar to Main Library, and it makes sense. They were both designed by the same architect, Walter Netsch. The further out you go from the center of campus, the newer the buildings get. While almost everything is gothic in the middle of the quad, just across from the oldest residence hall on campus, you'll find the modern glass dome, known as Mansueto Library, connected to the reg through an elevated hallway. Even though I'd never been to UChicago before this, Stepping into Mansueto Library felt like deja vu for some reason. If you were a dystopian novel fan in middle school, you'll probably recognize Mansueto too. It's the setting of the Erudite headquarters in Divergent. Although we don't have any dystopian factions headquarters at Northwestern, we do have what some might call a pretty intense fortress, the Technological Institute. After almost immediately getting lost when I stepped into the building, I understood why Tech Room Finder exists but I still don't understand how these doors work. Such an unusual design. Tech is home to a lot of our STEM-based classes. More generally though, academics at Northwestern are split up into six undergraduate schools. The Weinberg College of Arts and Sciences, the McCormick School of Engineering, the Medill School of Journalism, the School of Communication, the Beenin School of Music, and the School of Education and Social Policy. While Northwestern has only about 1,000 more undergraduates than UChicago, there are three times as many majors. All of UChicago's more than 50 majors are housed under the college, and only our graduate and professional divisions have specialized schools. After finding their way out of the tech labyrinth, any student would be famished. So we decided to hit up Allison Dining Hall for lunch. Allison is one of our four dining halls here on campus. Each one of them has different stations for comfort food, grilled classics, vegetarian options, allergen-free meals, kosher food, and of course, dessert. Our dining halls look strikingly different. None of the ones at UChicago span multiple stories. One similarity, however, is that both schools use food services provided by Compass Group. 
Besides the similar menus, we also get some of our ingredients from the same local sources. Now, let's see how an afternoon at UChicago compares. UChicago has four dining halls. Baker at the north edge of campus, Bartlett just north of the main quad, and Kathy and Woodlawn south of the midway. First thing I noticed, um, they have watermelon, which is huge. Such a treat. Northwestern only ever has pineapple, grapes, and melons. And I do love the pineapple, but watermelon is very special. We're sitting in the newer and more crowded part of Kathy today, near the entrance. On the other side of the food stations is the older part. It's a little scary having a thick carpet under the table, but if you look up, you're greeted by a banner bearing a name. These are house names. Each dorm at UChicago is split into houses of roughly 100 students each, and each house gets its own designated table at a dining hall. After class, most students' work both at Northwestern and UChicago is far from done. Scanning the bulletin boards at each school will give you a sense of just how much is going on with student organizations at any given time. Back in Northwestern, Norris University Center is a hub for a lot of student organization meetings and activities. This is also where the Daily Northwestern's newsroom is, on the third floor to be exact. We don't have a dedicated student center at UChicago, but Reynolds Club and Ida Noyes Hall are home to several student organizations. The Maroon has a permanent office tucked away in the basement of Ida Noyes, which is also home to the Office of Spiritual Life and the pub, a favorite campus establishment. One interesting difference between the Daily and the Maroon is how we define our desks. At the Maroon, the five editorial sections are News, Viewpoints, Arts, Sports, and Gray City, which is our long-form section. There are also multimedia sections like Podcasts, Photo, and Crossword. Now that we're all done with class, homework, and extracurriculars, it's time for a well-deserved break. At Northwestern, we're taking that break on the Lakeville. The Lakeville is one of the prettiest spots on campus. You can often see the shore bustling with people running, walking their dogs, reading on the grass, hammocking, and having picnics. I loved seeing the Chicago skyline from the other side of the city. Our go-to view of the city is from Promontory Point, located about a mile east of campus. As for other green spaces on campus, UChicago loves its quads. The main quad is our most familiar green space, but we also have lots of hidden gems, smaller quads like Harper Quad to the south or the gardens just north of the midway. We saw people playing frisbee, climbing trees, and just basking in the sun. The main quad was a prime people-watching spot, but the smaller gardens were perfect for curling up with a good book. Another significant part of the UChicago environment is the Midway Plaisance, or just Midway to most students. The Midway is a mile-long park that hosted exhibitions for the World's Columbian Exposition in 1893. It's the informal dividing line between North and South Campus, but it also formally separates two of Chicago's 77 community areas, Hyde Park to the North and Woodlawn to the South. Surrounding UChicago's campus, Hyde Park has everything from high-rise apartments overlooking the lake to craftsman bungalows on tree-lined streets. On 53rd Street, a couple blocks north of campus, you'll find Hyde Park's commercial district, which students often visit to go shopping or eat out. On the other hand, Evanston is a suburb of Chicago 12 miles north of downtown. Home to about 77,000 people, Evanston contains several retail districts and mostly single-family homes and small apartment complexes. As I walked around Evanston, I noticed that street names were quite unpredictable compared to Hyde Park's numbered roads. The roads in and around Northwestern were laid out in less of a grid and more of an organic structure, which I loved. It was distinctly suburban. For me, I loved the way the UChicago campus created so many enclaves of green spaces in its planned layout. While it can be daunting to leave the university bubble, both of us agree that exploring the areas surrounding our schools and Chicago have been an integral part of our college experiences. So if you're a Northwestern student that's never ventured south of the loop, or a Chicago student who's never ventured north of it. We hope this video gave you some motivation to make the journey. Thanks for coming along with us for a day in the life at UChicago and Northwestern.